Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to take a look at a excellent little budget cooler from Thermalrite. This is the Thermalrite Assassin Spirit 120 Evo. So the Evo is the important bit. This is a 120mm tower cooler, as you can see, with an improved fin stack and also main fan. The fan has an RPM speed between 350 and 2150 RPMs and is both PWM and ARGB enabled. This cooler also comes with four direct touch heat pipes, 100% memory compatibility, and retails for somewhere in the region of about 17 to 22 pounds here in the UK for this specific version. There are three different versions, I think, possibly four, of the Assassin Spirit 120 Evo. There is the ARGB one, which we've got here in black. There's also a white version with ARGB, and also there is a black version with a blacked out fan also, which is again a little bit cheaper. And funny enough, weirdly, the black one at the moment is the most expensive of the bunch. The white one, if you're going down the white build route, is actually a couple of pounds cheaper, which realistically at this price, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference, but certainly I think that's quite a nice thing. Normally white components are more expensive, but it seems to be the other way around currently at the time of recording, which is September 2025. So in today's video, I'm going to go through, do the unboxing, show you what you actually get. We'll also be doing some thermal tests and also some noise tests with a Ryzen 7700X, which I think is probably a good choice because most people, if you're spending around about £20 on a cooler, you're not going to be overly taxing it. And the 7700X does have a tendency to try to reach 95 degrees Celsius, regardless of what is going on. So if you're looking at maybe a newer processor 9600x those types of things then it's going to be absolutely fine those are actually a little bit cooler than the 7700x so we'll be doing all that a little bit later on the video we'll also be doing a full installation guide as well that is going to be in a separate video so if you don't want to see that obviously yeah it's going to make this a little bit shorter but let's head straight into it and see what we actually get in the box so obviously the first thing you get is the cooler and it's actually very well packaged as well and it comes pre-assembled so in terms of installation very easy to do the clips are attached the fans are attached it's just a matter of setting up the bracketry on the motherboard itself the only real things to consider is the fact that you have the connectors so you have a four pin pwm for the pwm fan and also you have the three pin five volt addressable rgb which also has a pass through on it as well which has got a cap over it to protect it from shorting out so that is pretty useful if you want to daisy chain a few devices the rgb actually looks great on this fan there is actually an rgb ring around the outside edge and also you have the opaque fan blades which are also illuminated Something else which you'll notice about this when you get it out of the box or when you actually use it is the fact that the blades have an extremely close tolerance to the outer edge. So that is great for air pressure and also for noise turbulence. I've done some very basic testing with this already, just running it at full speed and it's pretty quiet even at 2000 RPM plus. So I think this is going to be the new go-to cooler, especially for more budget orientated builds. So let's take a little look now at what we actually get inside the box. So you get all the usual stuff. So you get a instruction manual, which is very easy to follow, but realistically it's simplicity itself. When it comes to the different socket types, so it covers AM4, AM5, and also 11.5X and newer for the Intel side of things. So LGA 1700, LGA 1851. And when it comes to the actual brackets and bits and bobs to attach it to your motherboard, very simple they've gone with the usual tried and tested thing from thermal right so the kind of pinky red ones are for your amd the blue ones and the black ones are for the intel sockets the blue ones are generally the ones most people are going to use that's like lga 1700 etc and the black ones are for lga 1200 and also the 11 5x range if you are on the Intel system, it does come with a backplate, which is adjustable. So you've got little arms on the side. Just move those to whichever size is appropriate for your particular system. And again, it says on there 11.5X and also 1700. So that includes the LGA 1851. There's also a couple of 3M strips on there, self-adhesive, to attach it to the back of your motherboard, which will prevent it from falling off whilst you're trying to assemble it, which is pretty handy. If you're going to be installing on AMD, then it's a lot simpler. All you need is the section from there. You use your motherboard's own back plate. And for the top plate for both Intel and AMD, just these two simple brackets with the notches cut out for the appropriate systems. So that is very easy to do and minimizes waste. And it also comes with a tube of TF7 thermal compound, which is actually pretty good stuff. A little bit harder to apply than TF4, 
Personally, I do prefer to use TF4, although TF7 has a slightly better thermal capacity. I find it a little bit more difficult to actually apply to the CPU. So that is pretty much for what we actually get included. I'm going to break off now to do the installation of this, and then we'll come back with the results for the thermals and also the noise tests. Okay, so the testing has been done, and the results are pretty much as I would have expected from a budget cooler such as this. It does the job absolutely fine. Now, it does get quite warm on this 7700X processor. Like I said earlier, it tries to reach 95C no matter what you do. And I have just done a completely fresh installation of Windows 11 Professional with all the latest updates. And all I've done is installed Cinebench and also Hardware Monitor so we can see the temperatures. And it hit 95C as it was expected to do. Now, this is always seen as a negative thing. In this instance, it actually made no difference at all to the actual performance of the chip. We still got around about the 20,000 points in Cinebench, which is kind of what you expect to get from a 7700X. And I did think of doing some changes in terms of the fan profile. So I did some testing with the fan just set at 100% from the get-go straight away uh, to try and keep those temps under control. And yes, it hit 95C slightly slower, but still within the first few seconds of running the test. So. It isn't going to be that competitive when it comes to some high-end processors or if you're running those kind of all-core loads where the CPU is going to be under the most stress. Under gaming loads and also just normal internet browsing, that kind of stuff, it's absolutely fine. There's no problems at all. It stays very cool and very quiet. Now, in the room today, it's 24 degrees Celsius and the lowest recorded temperatures on the CPU were somewhere in the region of about 35 degrees Celsius as the package temp, which is the one I generally tend to go by. So about 10 degrees over ambient, which is kind of exactly what you expect from this type of cooler. And in fact, most coolers these days, when it comes to Ryzen processors, they're always around about that sort of 10 to 15 degrees Celsius over the ambient temperature, which is absolutely fine. With this though, the one thing I have noticed is the noise profile is absolutely excellent. Even at 100%, yes, you can hear it and it's kind of annoying, but it's not disruptive. So if you are running longer rendering tasks on your CPU and it is at 100%, yes, you're all gonna hear it, but it's a quite pleasant tone. Now I've actually done some recordings so you can hear it. So we'll do some tests now. You'll hear it at 25%, 50%, 75%, and also 100% loads. So I've actually ended up putting my lav mic right onto the RAM sticks so you can hear the uh, different tonalities of the fan profile. So let's take a little listen to those right now. So what do you think? I think it actually sounds uh, pretty good. The noise levels are excellent. And actually at the moment with the system running as it is now, obviously there's no graphics card, but the loudest thing actually coming from the system is the power supply. We've got a power supply behind here, just a, a cheap Game Max one. And if I put my hand over it, you can hear the noise profile change. It's a little bit of a tick from it. I am very sensitive to fan noise, as some of you are probably already aware. But for me, this fan is absolutely perfect. And I think it looks great. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the actual overall look of this. I think this has taken the Thermal Right kind of their game and just raised it a few notches. Previously, this Assassin Spirit would have been a kind of silver or like a, a plain metal finish, which is okay, does the job, but it does look a little bit on the cheap side. I think with the new added ARGB ring around the outside edge, the uh, upgraded fan, the heat sink as it is, and also the very minimal logo or branding. There's a small thermal right logo on the top there. Very easy to install. If you want to see how to install it, we've done a separate video on installation. It's an absolute breeze, as are most thermal right coolers, to be fair. 
So yeah, I think this is the all-in-one package. So I think actually, if you are looking for a, a very, very budget CPU cooler for your system, and you're not wanting absolute silence, then I think this is a very, very good choice. And certainly I would choose the Evo over the standard Assassin Spirit range. Um, there's only sometimes like a pound difference. Sometimes it's even cheaper depending when and where you're buying from. But yeah, I think this is a, a great choice and we'll leave some affiliated links in the video description. So if you wanna pick one up, you can do. For me as someone who quite regularly flips PCs, it's always nice to have something like this actually just in stock so if you do get that kind of emergency build that you've got to do, and you're like, oh, what shall I do to cool it? I don't want to spend a fortune. Grab yourself one of these, and uh, yeah, I think most of your problems will be solved. And again, it's going to be great for AM4, AM5, and also the Intel platforms. So it's uh, covering pretty much all the bases for a very low cost. So there you go. There are my thoughts and findings on the Thermalright Assassin Spirit 120 Evo ARGB. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, don't forget to hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the all notifications. That way you'll be notified when a video goes live. But that's going to wrap things up for us. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.